everyone and welcome to today's webinar broadcast. Today we are looking at the Accounts Advanced EPAC release that was released last week, uh, EP40502. And uh, today that's going to be uh, presented to you by Jack Holloway, one of our ENT consultants. My name is Tom Jeffrey, I'm one of the Education and Media Technicians. I'm going to be uh, keeping an eye on everything, making sure the session runs smoothly and also uh, looking out for your questions. So talking of questions, you can put those into the question field in the GoToWebinar control panel and I'll see those and I'll put those to Jack when I can. Uh, you've also got the option to use the hand raising feature so you can use the hand raising icon uh, on the uh, toolbar there you can see it on the desktop version on the left or if you're on a mobile device you've got it just in the top right and then you can ask your question live via your microphone. We're also recording the session that will be available on the knowledge base and on the YouTube channel very shortly. Any questions that you submit will be put into a Q&A document as well, and that, that will be on the knowledge base to accompany the recording. So that's the end of the housekeeping. I'll pass over to Jack and we'll have a look at the agenda. Thank you, Tom. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming along today um, to have a look at the EPAC changes that have come out in the latest EPAC, as Tom said, that were released last week. Um, there's no massive ones in this one but um we're going to go through some of the, the the things that have changed in there um to run you all through give you the basics of how this is all working now um so there's been some audit report wording changes now uh, this is in particular to uh with, with regard to the periods that are ending off 2019 with the pace uh, wording changes um, or PASI, however you would like to pronounce that um so you've got them there that's going to have changed uh, after the EPAC release, okay. Um, we'll have a look at the business combinations note update. So uh, they've done quite a lot of work here. Uh, underneath the note that used to be there, there's a couple of extra tables that have dropped in there with regards to acquisitions and the way that those notes and tables are built by default. So they are now uh, in the note for you uh, and easily set up so that you can use them as they are, okay. Um, we've got some discontinued operations and non-controlling interest disclosures that have changed and some additional mappings. I'll jump into the discontinued operations note and show you how that's all working there with the new tables again. There's some more tables that have gone underneath that note. Uh, we'll also do a little bit on, for those of you that aren't aware, because I know we've got new users all of the time, um, we'll jump into how to get the discontinued operations note on and how that affects the accounts and then last thing uh, again as i mentioned because we've got new users all the time it's just key things to consider when we're installing the epac i know i've seen a few of you on the call that i've done training with recently um so just to go through how that epac is installed um what you need to think about when you're doing it um but we'll go through those questions as we go through the webinar okay as tom said if you've got any questions at any time I obviously can't see you all, so if you want to drop, drop them in the chat, um, don't feel like you're interrupting or anything. Tom will let me know at a convenient point when we're going through the webinar to make sure that everyone's happy with everything there. Okay. Um, I'm just going to change my screen now to the case where file I've got open, so give me two moments. Okay, perfect. So um, this is just case where file with 2020 year end in here. Okay, it's just our training data that we've used to set up these files for today. Um, but I've taken obviously the latest EPACs to show you guys how that's all going to work. All right. Um, the way this is set up at the minute is a you know it's a file worked in pro work in progress file so there's some rounding errors to, to deal with which i won't go through on the call today but uh, they're there um showing you you know this is how it would appear if you're in the middle of doing a set of accounts okay so the first thing i want to talk to you about is the audit wording changes that have taken place in the audit report so um obviously if i just jump to the accounts prep screen a second you guys will be aware that this is going to be needed 
in the audit report here it's going to turn on this page here okay and obviously depending on the size of the company and the wording that will appear there okay um is where we will get these uh, word changes but down in here that will just change the wording as necessary in the audit report to cover all of the things um, that it needs to here um, notably if you look in the auditors responsibilities section that's where um, there has been a little bit more of a tweak where you know that's the particular area of focus with with regards to this okay um, so that's just a key one to point out to you there all right now if I jump on then uh, to the business combinations note okay um, and I've turned that on again by going in the accounts prep screen make sure you've got the business combinations note on here we can see a lot of different changes okay so um, there's been a lot of work go on in this section here with the way that this is all uh, running at the bottom so if there's been new acquisitions uh, the consideration that's being given in there okay and there's then been some these this tables added where we can now go in we can talk about what cash has been acquired uh sorry the if i jump up slightly previously you could talk about um what's been acquired so you've got tangible assets intangible assets stocks debtors uh cash is there if you have acquired cash um but you've got those options there that you had before okay um where you can enter the book value of the assets or liabilities that have been acquired and then you can make any fair value adjustments that will be used there okay now the new additions that have been added is the way that that purchase consideration has been made up so let's run through an example then to show you how this works but this table here is being populated with a check and this is the key bit that we, i want to show you today that number is expected to agree to that number there, okay? Given that that's how you funded the, the consideration and that's the total purchase consideration that you've seen in the accounts, okay? So I'll just run down this table and add in a few examples. So let's say we've had tangible assets. Let's go for a fairly modest total in there. Um, fair value adjustments you would add in here okay let's say they've been valued at eighty five thousand on acquisition okay um we've got stocks all right then let's uh, say there's a little bit of cash so i can show you the example okay let's say no debtors just for today's example um this is a new part within this epac as well is previously there would have just been uh, creditors but there's now the ability to split between the different lines if there's jet, uh, creditors due after more than one year uh, by default where you could have previously added them in the table um the, by default now the note is showing them for us excuse me um so we're going to go in here if i go creditors let's add them in Okay, excuse me, be a negative number. And provisions there, Let's say that. Okay, uh, but you can see here that, and this is a note that was there before, you've got the book value that was there before, fair value adjustments are giving us the total fair value there. Okay, now obviously this is currently the total purchase consideration, which matches this. However, if we've spent more than that for example um, and these calculations you would obviously probably have outside of caseware and then this is just bringing them in to the note okay let's say we paid 120,000 for that you can clearly see that if that's what the fair value of the, the assets were uh, then you've paid that amount of goodwill to get to your 120,000 okay now the new bit of the note which is down here is then going through and splitting out how that consideration has been processed okay so um or made up sorry rather than processed so let's say that uh the company spent fifteen thousand in cash all right 
Um, we can then add that in there. If there's then been any equity instrument instruments or debt instruments that have gone out at the same time so let's say we gave away 75,000 in shares okay um, 10,000 in debt all right um, you've got those bits to add in there okay another one to point out just uh, probably going to be relevant is deferred consideration if you've got a consideration that's going to be um, given out in the future or contingent consideration that is obviously going to be part of the costs here okay so it's going to make up the value of the total consideration that you're giving for the business now what is going to be useful if there's something in that list that isn't applicable you've got other consideration one okay um and let's say that's twenty thousand. the remainder okay in here let's say you were uh, there was a relationship with this business and they were within the creditors uh, so we're going we're gonna to write off uh, sorry debtors so we're going to write off 20,000 of the debt that was there um, you could then come into that cell and type that in there as you can with all of the other description cells in case where okay so you can then go and change what other consideration is and that's going to be easy to move into that table okay and that then again will need to match that number if i take this number out or make this number higher okay you're going to get that check bar appear there because case where obviously knows the total purchase consideration in terms of book value must equal the the way that the consideration is made up okay now Lastly, this is another table that's been added here. We've got cash outflow on acquisition. Okay. Now, if you guys will know, if you're doing a cash flow, when you've got acquisitions or things going on there, the cash flow will obviously have its own calculations that will still work the same way. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, that will still work the same way. Uh, and they will get the numbers in the cash flow from the same place okay but what this table is allowing you to do here is split out quite clearly if you want to split this out to show the cash outflow that's occurred on acquisition to support some of the numbers in the cash flow okay now the idea in here is that there's as much freedom as possible so uh, there's, there's no links going between cells just because um, we didn't want to limit what you can do with the tables okay so that's where we've got the freedom here and that's why there's nothing linked elsewhere depending on what people want to display okay so it's as customizable as it can be now for the cash outflow on acquisition let's say we've got the purchase consideration settled in cash all right which in this case would be the 15000 all right we've got directly attributable costs so let's say there was uh, 11,000 in professional fees to do with valuations and uh, the legal bits and pieces uh, less the cash and cash equivalents acquired which in this case we've said is 10,000 okay so minus 10,000 in there just giving us a net cap net cash outflow on acquisition of 16,000 okay um, and that can then be populated uh, as needed as I've said there okay if you need to add any extra rows it would be the same as previous where you've got the insert new row button okay and that would then drop in that table there okay now just down here uh, you have got the option to use the text boxes that are there um, and you can give any further results if you wish to on turnover and results for the period since acquisition um, to clearly display what's appearing in the accounts okay so tom are we all right we haven't had any questions yet is that all right for not waiting on anyone uh thanks jake we, we actually um have got a question come in um oh, which i'll just put to you before we we move on um the yeah. question was if you add a second business combinations note will those tables also appear on the second note um i believe you can add uh, a, yes. a number of notes can't you and they'll all be the same so 
I'm that's a good question. The let let us go past you on that one. The reason I'm hesitant to answer is uh, if the way that this is turned on at the moment in the accounts prep screen, uh, we turn on the business combinations note like any other note in case where uh, there is not uh, two business combinations note to turn on. So uh, if it was stock, for example, you wouldn't have a second stock note. Um, what you would probably do is add uh, additional tables in here. So let let me get back to you on that one. I don't I actually know the answer. Be, so. uh, it might be referring to um, you got the options at the top of the note, um, the help text at the top. The, um, Are there? And then you've got the option to add in your numbers there. there I think it's go. probably to do with that. See? Every day's a school day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can add a second note, <laughs> uh, and that will drop it all in down here. There we go. That so I'll pretend that last bit didn't happen. <laughs> all, all, all the viewers, you can all yep. pretend. Uh, so yes, edit. yeah, there you go. Uh, so no, good question. You can, if you go into this question mark box at the top, you can then add the the number of business combinations you've got in there. If you go more than five, uh, I'll refer back to my previous answer of i'm not sure yeah. um we'll, but, we'll, uh, we'll find out some more information um yeah for you and i'll get back to you directly after the session yeah but thank, thank you, you for that yes <laughs> is that was that all of them tom yeah perfect that's great thank you okay cheers, cheers guys uh so um we'll move on then to the discontinued operations note okay now the discontinued operations note uh, is similar to what was there before. Again, we've got uh, some extra tables at the bottom. Um, for those of you that aren't quite sure on how to get the discontinued operations note turned on, okay, uh, I've just got a second file open in here just to show you. Now, if you have got discontinued operations uh, and it's not a note that's turned on, and I appreciate some of you will know this, but as we said, we've got some new users that might not. Um, this is just uh, another file I've got open. Um, but if we go back to the accounts format part of the wizard, okay, you can change uh, whether discontinued operations note is showing or not showing, depending on just ticking that box there, and uh, that will then make the discontinued operations note appear. Okay. Now, if I jump back to our file where I've got it turned on already, um, this note will appear, and just so you guys are aware, you'll get the discontinued operations column appear on the statement of comprehensive income or PNL if that's what you've got turned on. That will appear in here um, and this allows you to, for those of you that haven't used it, you can type in what's in the discontinued operations uh, and Caseway will automatically calculate what should be in continuing operations if the total value from the TB is taking out that value for the discontinued sections. Okay. So that's the PL. If I jump down to the note then, okay, um, this is again, and I'll run through another example just to show you how this is all working. We've got the discontinued operations note with these different sections in here, okay? So cash proceeds, let's say that we've received 500,000 or the part of the business that's now discontinued, okay? and Including in that, we had, and I'll just chuck some numbers in here, £150,000 of tangible fixed assets. Okay, I've got £20,000 stocks. And let's say there were loads of debtors. Okay. And that will then work in there, excuse me. So the profit then on disposal would then be the combination of that, uh, less the uh, assets adjusted to give us this number here, okay? Now, with regards to that, we've got the net inflow of cash, uh, which has now been added on the bottom. So this can be cash consideration which was given and maybe this was 500,000 okay um, or the cash transferred on disposal okay um, and we've got that then uh, that can be added together if that has gone out 
with a net inflow of cash to be used in that discontinued operations note there. Okay, so not as big a change in that one, but little bits added to the bottom there. All right. Now, um, the last thing we want to talk about today, like we always do on these, is the, the considerations to think about when you've got uh, an update to install like this. Okay, so with the EPACs, you'll get the EPACs uh, emailed out to uh, the main contact, your IT team, or whoever Caseware's got on file to, to email out those EPACs to. Now, when they're installed on your machine, okay, oh, and you can, sorry, you can also get them on the, on the knowledge base if you've got a knowledge base login, you can download them from there. Um, once you've got uh, them installed on the machine, it doesn't mean that it's gonna automatically update all of your files, okay? Um, the reason for that, where you've got the files that maybe you've worked on for a few months, you've you've edited some of the notes, you've changed things in there, okay? Um, you don't necessarily want Caseware to drop a table update in and change everything you've done if you've sent it out to the client or sent it to your boss for review, okay? So the way that the EPACs work is that it will be installed on your machine and it will sit on your machine uh, and any new files that you've got will then uh, have the new EPAC in them. But any existing files, when you open them up, you will get a pop-up to uh, say, uh, these are the knowledge base updates that are here. Do you wish to take the knowledge base updates that are there or do you want to uh, deselect all and, and not take any at this stage? Okay. Now, if it were me, the way I used to do it when I was in uh, practice or in industry, the um, if when I was in practice, if we'd sent it out to the client, we used to not take any EPAC updates on that file. The reason is that if the client has seen a set of accounts looking one way and then a major change happens, you wouldn't necessarily want that to occur, okay? So um, in that case, I wouldn't take the EPAC updates if you're at that stage. However, if you haven't sent them out anywhere yet, um, I would take the EPAC updates because they cannot, they obviously have got the up-to-date functionality um, and they've got all the up-to-date um, tables and things like that. Um, it is also worth considering that if you phone support with an issue uh, and they know there's been an EPAC go out that you're not up to date with, they will obviously check that you're on the latest EPAC because that is where um, some of the solutions to the problems that the support calls, uh, they obviously go into the, to the new EPACs so they will know that the EPACs have got a fix in them for certain bits and pieces that need fixing. So it is just worth considering if you do phone in, they are gonna check you on the latest EPACs because that's how some of the solutions are put out. Okay. Um, if you are in the situation, which I mentioned a moment ago, where you've got the uh, EPACs installed on your machine, but you haven't, uh, you've said, sorry, you've sent the drafts out to clients or, or whatever, um, you can stop updates coming onto the file. If you go onto the wizard and then completion, okay. Um, you've then got the lock updates section here in the completion section of the wizard, okay? And once you've clicked on that box, you won't get any updates appearing uh, or popping up for that set of accounts, okay? So for that caseware file, you won't need to worry that there's gonna be things drop in um, and, and come through here that you, you don't want to uh, include in there, okay? So that's how that's working in there. Um, that's pretty much everything that we wanted to go through today. We've got a little bit of time at the end for Q&A, and as we've already seen, that could be interesting uh, if you send me something I don't know, uh, which hopefully there's not too much. But if there is, uh, if you could let Tom know any questions that you've got, um, and we'll uh, answer any questions that you guys have got on any of the new updates. Thanks, Jack. Nearly fell off my chair there. Um, so thank you for your questions that have come in. Uh, please continue to submit your questions. We uh, we very much welcome questions and feedback. Uh, so you can continue to do so using the question field now. Uh, you've also got an opportunity via the feedback form at the end to ask any additional questions. 
Um, in the meantime, just for those that may have joined late or missed um, the earlier in the presentation where we showed turning on the business combinations note, could we just uh, jump back in and just uh, show everyone again how you would turn that on? So the business combinations note is uh, in the accounts prep screen in the okay. same way that um, all the other notes would be. So if you jump in, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong file here. Oh, no, I'm not. It's because I've locked it already. Uh, it's efficient. That lock. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it's live. The accounts prep screen in here. OK, um, if you. Here is the list of all of the notes that you've got in case where different areas of the strategic report, accounting policies, things like that. Um, but right at the bottom down here, there's a business combinations note, which you can turn on uh, by selecting yes there. And that will then turn on the business combinations note that is there by uh, in, in the case where templates. Okay. So we can see there in the in our in our accounts prep uh, screen in our file that we've got across there, which is telling us that um, Claythor has decided not to turn it on. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd have a tick to say that it, it thinks it should be on, or a question mark to say that it's not sure it needs more information. So um, if it's not there, that's where to go, and you'll you'll probably see as we have that there's a cross there, and you just need to override it using the disclosure override column. Uh, you can find more guidance on that on the knowledge base as well. Um, but if you need any more information uh, or clarification, just let us know. Uh, we've got a couple of more questions that have come in. So please, can you advise how do we eliminate non-controlling interest on disposal of subs which were partially owned, in in particular, the mapping codes to select when booking journal entries? Yes, I'm reading that correctly. Yeah. Okay. So the mappings to do with non-controlling interest is what we want to focus on there, I believe. Um, so in the trial, if I go back to the mapping screens here, there won't be any in this particular training set we've got. But um, in H91, you've got the non-controlling interests within the mapping. Okay. Um, now, when you're in here, uh, there's obviously equity brought forward. If you want to go into there, you can add that into there. You've got any equity movement that's happened in the year. OK, um, Tom, remind me of the exact that this question had so I can actually. Uh, the question right. was about eliminating non-controlling interest on disposal of subs. Um, I mean, it, it, it may be something that that um, we need to get some uh, guidance together for you and get back to you after the session. Um, yeah, unless you think uh, you can cover it quickly in a couple of minutes. No, no, yeah, it, it's a little bit more of a complex answer than a, a couple of minutes. Okay. It, de it depends on the, I'm assuming in this case, uh, we're talking about journals, uh, in which case we would need to, some of that you would need to calculate outside of caseware and then bring yeah. the journals in. Um, okay. And then it would be slip, right map codes. But yeah, like, let's go with Tom's. We'll, we'll, we'll get do, back yeah. to so We'll get some information for you. Uh, we'll drop you an email after the session and um, get some more information and we can make sure we get the right guidance to you. So uh, what we'll do, we're just um, coming up for, for being out of time. So if we go to the uh, back to the slides, mm -hmm. don't worry. Again, if you've got any questions you want to ask, you can continue to do so and also get in touch with us after the session. Also worth pointing out, you've got the handout section in the control panel there. So we have a PDF which just summarizes the updates within this EPAC. Uh, if you need more detail in, on any of those updates, again, please let us know. Uh, so if we just jump ahead to the uh, upcoming webinars, if you wanted to uh, sign up to any of those events. Obviously, you've done so for this one, but you can go to the, the events page of our website. So that's caseware.co.uk forward slash events, and you can see the agendas and register to attend. And as we've already mentioned, all of those sessions are recorded, so you'll be able to find those on our client services YouTube channel, and the recording and any Q&As will be on the knowledge base shortly after as well. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found it useful. We'd very much appreciate it if you could complete the feedback form at the end. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you on the next webinar. Take care. Cheers, guys.